XML external entity injection. In this video, we're gonna be getting hands-on uh, with exploiting this vulnerability. <laughs> Welcome back to another video on the Port Swigger Lab here. So there's four labs that are um, a part of the XXE uh, document that we were looking at last time we made a video on the series. So we'll start off with the very most basic one, just how to exploit XXE using external entities to retrieve files. This is a, a really common test uh, for XML external entity injection will involve uh, just trying to get it to... Uh, in the most basic sense, just retrieve files on the system. This can be very useful for OSCP. You'll find this uh, in some of the boxes you encounter on there as well. So I'm just going to click this to access the lab here. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we will just go to a random item, and you'll see there's this check stock ability here. Uh, if I run that, we'll see it comes back with a number here. Now, looking at the traffic that we captured there, um, Let's see here. We have this post request, right? So when we click check stock, it makes this post request. As you can see, it uh, is sending this XML here. And, uh, you know, that is, it's parsing that on the back end. It's parsing the XML and um, making the query based off of uh, the product ID and store ID passed in the XML. So whenever you do see something like this, um, controllable, user controllable XML, do you want to do a basic, uh, a basic test like so for the external entities? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this line with something like, uh, well, first of all, let's send this to the repeater, right? So we can send this off and I will replace this with this here. So basically what's going on is that uh, we're defining an external entity we can call whatever we want. In this case, we'll call it XXE. And we'll say that uh, this entity will uh, retrieve the file Etsy password on the target system. So now that we've done that, all that's left is we need to actually call it. So we can do that with uh, this. You got to pre-prend uh, the variable name with an ampersand. And you end with the semicolon. So we'll try to send that. And we see that uh, even though it's an invalid product ID, it gives us the entire contents of the Etsy password file. So we basically have uh, file read access on this system. And obviously, if this uh, web server was running uh, as an elevated user, like the root account, we might be able to read, um, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe read the... Uh, SSH key, private key, or something like that to get access, or there's a whole number of attacks we could do at that point uh, to go from here. So that's pretty much it for this lab. Once you do that, it'll say that you solved the lab. Now, I did go through and practice these beforehand, so um, you'll see that as soon as I boot these up. But yeah, we'll go on to the next one here. We're going to use XXE to actually perform an SSRF, a server-side request forgery attack. So we have this server here that is um, running a simulated EC2 metadata endpoint. Um, so we're going to actually, instead of, and this is very simple here, instead of conducting the attack against a local file, we'll say, hey, uh, make a request to this server. I'll show you how simple this is. Uh, let's access the lab. And we're trying to get the uh, secret key from this endpoint because basically the server is only accessible uh, it's like an internal server right it's not accessible to the outside outside of the network however it is accessible for for this web server which is uh on the internal network uh so the the website here normally the way it works is um the web server will be in the dmz or something like that where it will have access to the internal network but also it will have access uh, you know outside users of course will be able to access the website um, but not the internal servers. So it's kind of a bridge between the two. So if you can exploit the server, you can actually have it make requests to the internal server, right? If we are able to read the output as we were earlier. And if this isn't making sense to you, I'll show you here in a second. We're going to do the same thing again, the check stock. And now if I look at um, this request here, this post request, send it off to the repeater. I can see pretty much the uh, the same case as last time. So we can come here and uh, grab this, and, uh, oh, I should have, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to go back to get that endpoint. 
after this though because I got rid of it in my clipboard. But uh, right, so this was what we did before. Um, we just said to retrieve the file on the system, and uh, looks like I might have made a, a small error here. So let's just make sure that we're doing everything the same way. Let's see here. I will grab this, replace it with this, and let's just say XXE. So, yeah, this is what we had last time, right? Now, instead of reading the local file, this is where we would pass in that endpoint. So, uh, real quick, if I go back to, uh, well, I can... See, I can exit out of this one now. But let's just go back and uh, grab this endpoint here. So I will pass that in instead of the file here. So all we need to do is, is have it like this. And when we send this off, we should notice this, this one right here, latest. So I got to thinking like, okay, maybe that is an endpoint, right? So I say slash latest and see what happens. I send that off, and now I get uh, metadata. So let's add that, right? Slash latest slash metadata. Send that. And now we get IAM, and we just keep going, right? Just like so. And now we see security credentials. So this next one, or pretty soon we should be getting to the, uh, the good stuff, right? So put that in. And then admin. And now we have the XML that has uh, this access um, key ID. Or this is probably the one we really want, right? The uh, secret access key right here. This is like your password or access key. You also have a token here. So you got pretty much everything you could want. Uh, so we pretty much exploited it at this point using um, SSRF through XXE. Pretty cool stuff. Now, in this next one, we're getting a little bit more advanced here. You see the uh, practitioner difficulty. Uh, this will be exploiting X include to retrieve files. So there'll be a check stock feature once again. However, this time uh, we won't have access to the entire XML document like we did before. We're sending an XML document in the uh, request body. This time uh, that will be happening on the back end. We'll just be sending the parameters in, but... Uh, there's other ways to exploit XXE. So we can use the X include statement to retrieve the contents of the Etsy password file. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do that then. So we'll give this a minute to load. So same as always, we're just gonna go through, run the check stock feature and uh, grab that request via post request. Now see, this time this is what's different, right? We don't have access to the entire XML document, right? Like here, we have access to the entire document. This time that's happening on the back end. We're just sending in some uh, data here. And then it's uh, actually at writing that uh, to the XML document that we can't, you know, we can't control the whole thing. But what we can do is uh, we could write in, uh, and this is explained in the Port Swigger, uh on the uh, explanation page of XXE, when it's teaching you about external entities injection, they teach you uh, the way to exploit the X include. Basically, instead of having product ID equal to one, we will have we will define our own uh, markup here called foo, and have XMLNS uh, dot XI or colon XI right, and then you'll have the uh, X include path, and then the file we want to. Uh, to read will parse the text of the Etsy password file. So if we do that, then we'll see that we were still able to get file read, get the uh, XML external entity injection going properly. So at that point we have exploited this. And now the final one is uh, the most involved one, I guess you would say. This will be exploiting XXE via image file upload. This is something that is very prevalent in the real world and, and also you encounter it potentially in the OSCP as well. So pay particular attention to this one. Uh, but basically they want, you know, we're able to attach avatars to a comment 
and uh, it's using the Apache Batlick library, which I'm not too familiar with, to process avatar image files. So basically they want us to have it display the contents of the Etsy host name file after it's processed, and then you can just submit that. So let's just go ahead and get started here. So we're gonna actually want to create our own uh, malicious SVG file. SVGs are probably one of the easiest files, uh, file types to work with when you want to embed some malicious XML because an SVG file is, you know, contains XML. So it's not like trying to do it with a um, brand new, uh, you know, like with an image file or something that you're going to have to do some magic bytes and all that stuff. You don't have to do any of that. Um, I'll show you here. Basically, I've created this uh, file.svg file here that has our exploit in it, right? Basically, it just has some XML. Basically, like the first example, right? Well, a little bit different, right? Because SVGs, um, you could just look up um, like a, an example SVG file, right? And basically, you want to include the tags that you need, like these XML and S um, parameters and stuff here and the SVG uh, markup. And you just get some valid stuff for that. And then you add in the external entity here. So I'm basically doing the entity like I did before. We'll call it XXE, say read Etsy host name. And then here is the key part, the ampersand XXE to actually then call that. So, and if I run file on this, you know, it's going to say it's an SVG, right? Um, scalable vector value, uh, ve vector graphics image, right? So now we could just say um, view post here. And here's where we can enter a comment. We'll say comment name hacker and then hacker at mail.com. And now we'll choose the file from our, let's see, we have in dev shm file.svg. So we do that. And uh, I don't think that there's any modifications necessary from here, but we just post this comment and it went through properly. So now when we go back to the blog, we can scroll down and now we see, uh, we can actually see, this is it right here. So we're going to zoom, zoom, zoom on in to the maximum, which is 300% on Firefox at least. And you see these letters and numbers here. That's actually the solution that we would submit um, to, like when we submit solution, we would type that in and that's how we'd exploit it. So yeah, hopefully these uh, explanations, these walkthroughs, these demos were valuable to you. If so, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button as well. It will certainly help me out in the algorithm and let me know that you're interested in this type of content. And if you guys are eager to you know, learn some more web hacking, check out uh, the videos on screen right now. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.